enough you said you wanted me to continue, so I will see if I can uh, get this done to its completion. There's a lot of work to do, and I just don't want to make too many videos because, um, you know, these are long. I also wanted to show you something really quick. This is uh, the painting I've been working on. I showed it one of the first videos of this series. And so this is how far I've come so far with it. I still have a long ways to go before it's finished, but um, it's getting there. I finished this character, which is kind of cool. It's a Surasa. These are characters from my novel, my uh, sci-fi novel. This is uh, the Naga. She's still to be completed, and this is the robot. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get going. going to take a second because there's so many elements. Okay. So, we left off with her. We pretty much finished the whole arm. I just have to, you know, I'd have to put in these extra little layers and stuff to show, like, the full finished version, but um, make sure I'm on the right layer. Okay. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to kind of smooth the face a little bit, turn my opacity down to about 37. I'm just, I just want to slightly smooth this. And I want to change the size of the cheek there by doing that. Keep in mind that I'm going to try to you know, also teach more techniques and stuff that will hopefully help as I've are going through this, I'll kind of talk about you know what things do and and why they do it. So, what what happens is the is the lighter a color, it pops it out. It makes it come out at you, and the darker the color, it pushes it further into the background. So when you have a light and dark color, you kind of create this this hill. And I don't want too much of a hill there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make that a little bit lighter, not a little bit darker rather. And I'm going to make this a little bit. I don't want that so dark. Something about like so. And I just kind of want that soft edge there. And uh, it's getting kind of muddy, and that's fine because once I add the layers over it, it'll be better. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my hard flat brush. When I say flat, what I mean is that the brush is. I'm going to get 100%. I'm going to put this color down first, then I'm going to go with this brown color. And when I say flat, what I mean is that the brush is, um, there's no, there's only opacity on it. And by flat, I mean it looks like that when you paint. So uh, opacity means the harder I push the dark, the lighter I push, it gets lighter, as you can see there. But it doesn't get thinner. Sharp brush is a brush that will get thinner and has opacity. And then my other brush I use has no opacity and only has thickness. So it'll only get either thicker or not thicker, depending on how hard I push. Notice I'm using all these subtle color differences. And I can add a lot of that, too, after I uh, have the colors in there. Then I can go in and add more subtle differences to those colors by using overlays. And I'm just going to kind of stroke in the direction I want this hair to go. And what I, what, I, what I do when I do hair is I like to block in the major structures of the hair first. And once I have the major structures of the hair blocked in, like what I mean by major structures is the, the different folds that are going to occur. So I know I'm going to have kind of a fold there, and that will kind of come out like that. And I kind of want this like so. That's going to be a light part, a little bit of the... Uh, light will shine through a little bit right there. Okay. And I kind of have a little bit right there. So I like using all the colors that are that are in the painting itself rather than uh, you know different different colors. Okay. So once I have it, you kind of treat it like cloth, like folding cloth and you can have parts that, you know, fold over. And I'm going to use um, sharp brush has both opacity and 
shape dynamics. I'm just going to kind of paint in some shapes in there. I'm going to go down to size 5. And I'll just kind of paint in a little bit of... I'm going to use her uh, colors there. I know I'd have a little bit of shine across her bangs there. And I'm going to kind of take the bangs like that, kind of fade it in. Add some more of this kind of blue color. Don't be afraid to, uh, you know, just add in the colors that are in your painting all around your painting into the hair. Uh, it really does add a cool, at least I think so, it can add some cool variation to the painting. And uh, it's not meant to be photorealistic. Um, you can go for the photorealistic look as far as the whole painting can look realistic. Um, but you can use wild colors and get a really neat effect. An example of that is uh, that painter that did uh, some comic stuff. Uh, he did Conan. I just, his name is escaping my mind right now. But anyway, he, he does this kind of like very realism, this almost photorealistic look, but he uses wild colors, and, and that's what gives it style is the wild colors. And besides realism anyway, we when you're doing total realism, you're going to have some wild colors uh, within your painting, so just keep that in mind. I just want a couple brighter little parts in the hair. And then if I wanted to, I could use uh, Dodge Tool here and just kind of some parts of the skin, or not skin, hair, but I wanted some. I can I can always come back and change that too, So, but I just want to add a little bit of that there for now, and then I'll go and paint over some of it. A little bit here to kind of add. Also, it adds some color variation that I can get that I wouldn't normally have in there by doing that with the dodge. And I had it on uh, highlights up there when I had that tool selected. I add some darker lines in there. Okay, I think that's good for now. Maybe I'll add some uh, few strands of wild hair. rid of that yuckiness. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and save this. You want to periodically save just in case you have some sort of system crash and you lose everything and that really sucks. You don't want that to happen. Again, the brush I use most is the flat brush to do most everything. I don't even worry about it kind of coming in like that and losing some of it. I kind of like the background when it disappears when some of the things kind of disappear into the background and it looks cool gives it a neat look and you want to do that with some of the edges I'm going to make this hard edge here because I don't want uh normally I would paint the background on, on a separate layer but for this demo I'm not oops for this demo I'm not doing that I'm actually uh, just kind of going to paint it all on one layer because I'm not going to go in much detail with the background. I don't, I don't like painting backgrounds, and so I'm probably going to just leave the background where it's at. I'm not going to really do much else with it. I'll do more with uh, this over here, obviously, but that's pretty much the only part of the background I think I'm really going to mess with mostly the tree I guess but as far as the uh, background here the clouds and whatnot and I'm almost out of time uh, anyway I, I I'm gonna be putting up different links sometimes in the videos so if you just click on the link to support me that's all you have to do to support me is if you want to support me is just click on the link to support my videos and you don't have to do anything else except for click on the link so there are articles to different things sometimes videos Okay, so that makes it all for this video, and uh, tune in for the next one.